Let's do this. Okie doke, so I'm gonna just, yeah, I decided to uh, switch gears, I, I guess you can call it maybe a little bit more of an optimistic uh, view to life. Um, so yeah, I'm going, uh, decided to switch over to the First Army moves and the moves for Special Corps 1. And just before I zoom in a little bit, I did want to show way off in the distance where the heck um, Mount Doom is. Still see it over there, and then that little corridor that the Kriegfrosch has to get through. And I'm going to tell you, um, you know, based on two things, I mean, it's just uh, realization. Well, I'm not going to say two things. Well, the second thing kind of hammered it home again. Uh, like to, uh, my optimism has certainly been tempered. <coughs> excuse me, tempered um, about trying to get uh, the Kriegfrosch towards Mount Doom, but we'll see. Excuse me, but the, the second thing this morning when I was finishing off the moves was I forgot about uh, the two Russian cavalry. And essentially, they're not going to have much to do pretty soon. I mean, I'm not going to send them off to here because remember, this doesn't exist technically by this scenario, but I'm still playing with it. But the Germans have nowhere to go here. So this, this German cavalry is isolated still. Um... So anyways, like after this, the Russian cavalry have nothing to do. Well, obviously, I'm going to start moving them this way, which is exactly where I don't want them to go for the Central Powers players because they're going to be highly mobile and be able to maybe pounce on the Kriegfrosch uh, going towards Mount Doom. I didn't think of anything like that, but... Uh, and now I feel kind of like I'm cheating. Well, I'm sure I'll be th I'll thinking about it later, but I mean, I can already see me strategize you know, in the back back of my mind, trying to figure out how to, like, it's like, oh, that's something you have to think about. It's like, hey, you shouldn't be thinking about that, but it's, oh, I don't know. I shouldn't, like I said, it's, you know, I mean, what the hell do you want, for Christ's sake, you're playing solo. So, but I mean, it's not like I'm re-rolling things to make it, you know, so the, like, you know, someone, one side always wins or something crazy like that. I'm going to do that, do that, obviously. Okay, let's see if this works here. All right. Yes, no, no combats. I can tell you that much. Um, yeah, I think you'd be able to see. You're not gonna. You, I don't think you really want to. Whatever. But I think it's more. Like I said, for oh, I'm so happy that as well. I have been recording, uh, especially with all the combats, uh, the video, because um, I didn't record properly the um, on paper when I did all those seven combats down there with the third army. Well, the two third armies and. Um, yeah, I had to, to rewatch and uh, find out how many hits uh, happened to whom and all that stuff. So, hold on, I'm just going to have another sip of coffee. Mm. All right. <clears throat> and then after this, I did check upstairs and I, fa I found out that the camera I I'm using for the, uh, the live stream there yesterday, the one that I used yesterday, um, if I keep it at 720p, which ironically, the only reason why I found that out is because StreamYard just wants to milk every single flippin' penny out of you. It's ridiculous. They almost remind me of that, um, oh shoot, that Irish uh, airline that I took once, uh, Ryanair. I think uh, it, uh, there's like a lot of running jokes you can get on about it, but I mean, I can remember one of them was kind of like, um, uh, you know, like your, your air ticket is cheap, but you get dinged for everything, so it's almost to the point where it's like, oh, you want oxygen with that seat? Like, it, you know, it's going to cost you that. Like, it's just, it is mind-boggling. I, yeah, I could tell you some stories sitting on there. Holy cow. All I got to say is, thank God I'm not overweight. I don't know how, anybody slightly overweight, I don't know how the hell you can fit in those freaking seats. All I heard was complaining. Uh, that's all I got to say. It was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they, okay, I'm not kidding you, they had, um, like you could buy lottery tickets or whatever, <laughs> well, the guy, the, the, or not, I can't remember what it was, oh, they were selling something for whatever, and one of the winning thing was, oh, you, you have a chance of, um, winning like a million pounds or something, and, uh, and the, the, um, Air flight attendant said, just imagine what you could do with a million pounds. You'd never have to fly Ryanair again. <laughs> ah, ah, I'm sorry, this is like, this is insane. I love this. I just love this brutal honesty. 
Oh my god, as long as the pilot doesn't, you know, well, obviously I'm still here. Okay, so here we go. That was just like, that was just awesome. Okay, so I'm going to move the 50th Infantry Division, that's number 15. So what I'm doing here is you're going to hopefully see a hell of a lot of sevens. I'm going to start popping in this. So basically what that means is um, they're going to need more than three hits. Uh, okay. Remember, it's one-third um, one the amount of hits to cause a retreat. So uh, one-third of seven is not two. So they're going to need three hits. Um, if I can get all the Russians up to seven, the Germans are going to have one hell of a hard time uh, getting rid of all of them. That's the thing. It, it's like, okay, you may get rid of one or two, um, but can you manage to... Um, you know, get these guys a force a retreat. If you need three hits across the board with maybe die roll modifier issues, yeah, it's going to be awesome to start using the um, uh, the Jeopardy thing. And look how far away they are from the border. That's quite a distance. So that's a lot of entrenchments going on. Um, so basically, the the main strategy for the uh, for Renan Camp and Rosenshield, who's the commander for uh, Special Corps One, is essentially since they know they're not they're not going to get any supply coming anymore, um, but they do have a ton of replacement units. I think uh, in Kovno there they have nine strength points worth of replacement units, so that's uh, quite a bit. Um, so essentially, what uh, they're going to try to do is just hunker down and try to. Um, Keep this double rail line safe. That's it. I think this is a cut rail line. I think the Germans, or sorry, not the Germans, the Russians inadvertently, um, yeah, it's been cut. But as long as they can keep this, this little spot here, okay. That's anyway. So that's what's going to happen. Um, I'm not. You're going to see. I'm just going to move things over here. But um, let's. In other words, what I'm going to say is like some guys are going to like like 50 because remember I can't what it comes da down to is that you're not allowed to vacate a trench or an entrenchment hex. Otherwise, they can they're you know, they're considered null and void. So I need to move people over first before I start shifting over just like that thing. Uh, I know that meandering Mike had mentioned before that uh, he was like, a, you know, uh, it's not it's not the same thing because like I was saying before um, you know I, I don't like it as a formality or whatever to move uh, units out of a hex leaving them vacant before I put some in um, and meandering Mike was like well just remember it's kind of like a fluid motion you know it's all you're not like it's not like everybody's gone and then somebody you know moves in but with this um, you know since it's a particular uh, aspect of, uh, you know, uh, Dave Schroeder's like, just make sure you don't leave a hex vacant. I can see what he's, you know. So what I'm saying is, I'm going to go over here, and we're going to kind of almost go backwards, if that makes any sense, so I don't ha I don't drive myself insane. Or, well, we'll see what happens here. Okay, so I'm going to move the 50th Infantry Division, which is number 15, from 2205 to 1905. So... They're going to go up to here, and they can. So that's one, two, three, four points. Okay, so it's still going to be an E3 there. Well, I'm going to move the 22 out of there, because they're going to go up in a minute. Okay? The thing that sucks about this is I did want to bump the trench up here. But the problem is is the combination of getting in and out of zones of control, or out and in of zones of uh, control, uh, to bolster this guy up with the woods and the river, it's extremely difficult. So uh, they're kind of like stuck there, in a, or I want it, it, you can see what I mean. It's, it would be not as hard, obviously, on the flip side, if I had five movement point Germans uh, dealing with it, but I don't have that issue. Uh, Okay, so I'm going to move the 25th Infantry Division. 
and the 57th Reserve Infantry Division, which is the guys I just took out of 15, of the spot of 15, Subichi 22. And they're going to go from 1904, uh, uh, sorry, 1905 to 1904. So now we're going to start getting our sevens. You're going to see. And it's going to be tough. Really bloody tough for the Germans to try to get this out of here, man. That's three hits. All right. So now, those guys technically are still there. So right now we have an 11, if you want to look at it that way. So now we're going to move the uh, 54th Reserve Infantry Division and the 28th Infantry Division, BG-11, from 1903. And they're going to join the 40th Infantry Division, BG-28, at 1802. So they're going to go to there to there. So now we got our seven. And then I just move these guys over. From there to there, you, you get the idea. All right, so I'm gonna get these guys out. Oops. Yeah, not gonna be easy, uh, Germany, not gonna be easy. That's the whole point. I don't want it to be tough. Tough as nails, but this is the thing. If we can just start making this nice and strong, you're not getting us out of here. You are not getting us out of here. Simple as that. All right. So move the, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, the 1st Army uses Divisional Breakdown on the 30th Infantry Division at 2004. These guys, the, the brand new, newly, newly foreign dudes. At 1802, oh sorry, uh, into the 1st Brigade of the 30th Infantry Division with two strength points. And the 119th Infantry Regiment with one strength point. And they're going to join the 50th Infantry Division at 1905. So now we've got our seven, seven, and we've got one point sitting here. And guess where they're going? Doesn't take a genius to figure that one out. All right. Okay, so remember we've still got one strength point sitting there, but they're going to hop on over here, I hope. And the 120th Infantry Regiment to join the 51st and the 43rd Infantry Divisions, number 24, at 1903. So now we've got lots of sevens. Very, very nice. Very, very happy. Three hits, three hits, three hits, three hits. Three hits because of the trench. Yes. All right, Core HQ3 is going to use divisional breakdown on the 6th Siberian Infantry Division at 2006. Oh, and by the way, I found a website, another website this morning that has like cut, uh, cut out so much of my time finding out the uh, brigades and regiments for all the divisions. It's not funny. I don't know who the heck they did it, but it looks like they took, because they reformatted it, so it's not like a cut and paste. It looks like someone accessed the same Russian website that I go to, translated it all into English, and then... Um, redid the pages because it's just wonderful um, excuse me I'll have to provide the link to that because uh, I'm uh, the amount of information I'm able to find is just absurd you can find out their headquarters uh, uh, on and on and on and on and on it's just amazing like what cores they were uh, you know you get the whole point okay so this guy number here the 6th Siberian Infantry Division they're going to be turned into the 1st Brigade of the 6th Siberian Infantry Division with two strength points, and they're going to remain in 2006. 
Can't use anything over any of these guys. And the 23rd Siberian Rifle Regiment with one strength point, and they were going to remain in 2006, so that's three strength points there. All right, oops, found a two there. Okay, so you're a three. And then um, the 24th Siberian Rifle Regiment with one strength point. They're going to become number four, and they're moving to 2107. Okay, hold on. I can't find my number four. Oh, there it is. Oh, my goodness. I think today, after today, too, I'm putting away all these store-bought counters. I don't need them anymore, I think. They're just a hindrance to me at the moment. And uh, number four is going to where? 2107. Yep, they're just, uh, I was using them as a backup uh, record keeping, but I don't think I need them anymore. So, if that's the case, I'm really stepping out, which is wonderful. Sorry about the shadows, I didn't add a light, a secondary light, so I don't know how good this is going. Oh, and I need one strength point. Alright. Yeah, and then after this I get to go upstairs, uh, well, I'll eat and stuff like that, but... Um, get ready for the... Um... Oh yeah, I forgot about the, on the sidetrack there, I got sidetracked about this uh, steam yard. So I found out that if I stick to 720p, that's what it is with Steamyard. Oh my god. Oh, you want to go to 1080p? It's going to cost... It's like, come on, for crying out loud, man. Anyways, that's how I found out. So it's kind of like a fortuitous thing. If I stick to 720p, I'm actually able to use this manual um, uh, scale. Or uh, zoom, sorry. Uh, it can't be manual zoom. There's no way. Anyways, there's a zoom on the on the webcam, that, so I'm able to use it quite a bit. So that should help with uh, uh, the Tannenberg game upstairs, the Spence and Gable thing. So I can do that for the Sunday. Sunday with Spence and Gable. Uh, today, hopefully, I can get to read the rules and take a quickie look at the counters and map. And then um, I'm also going to be using it for the Caporetto thing, I hope. So uh, with the zoom function, that should really help. Uh, all right, so now I'm going to move the 14th. Infantry Regiment, number 26. Where the heck are you? This guy, I think you're going to go join up here, right? Or can you? No. Ah, this guy has to go to here, to here, to here, if you get it. So that's one, two, three, four. See, I, because you can't leave it vacant, do that thing. So I'm not going to move the ones over. I'm just going to transform this into a two in a second. You get the idea. So I'm going to move the 14th Infantry Regiment from 2204 to join Corps, uh, Corps HQ-3 and the 16th Infantry Regiment at 2005. So these guys are going to go. We no longer have those guys there. So they've hopped on over to here. They're going to become a 2. But these guys are now going to pop on over here. You're going to see the 16th is. See here. <clears throat> yep, move the 16th Inf Infantry Regiment from 2005 to join the 24th Siberian Rifle Regiment at 2107, which is number uh, number four. Now I'm going to move the 14th Reserve Siberian Infantry Division, uh, number 56 here, from 2506 to 2406. Just getting them in a better spot. There's no point in having them way the heck over here. And I still want to scare the living dickens out of it. Well, obviously, I want to jam these guys out. And not too many more moves. Like I said, there aren't going to be any combats for crying out loud. It's all defensive now. Defense or isolation. Uh, move the 13th Infantry Regiment, which is number 25. From 2304 to 2305. 
Not doing it, you know, we're just still doing our thing here. Then we're going to move the 68th Reserve Infantry Division, number 59. Uh, they're going to cross the Neiman River to 2404. Uh, did I do this right? Yeah, because you still need to get in and out of zones of control, correct, Chris? Or did you F yourself up? So that's three points. Ooh, I think you just made it. You better be careful, dude. You don't want to let his cavalry run away. Um, move the 1st Brigade of the 72nd Reserve Infantry Division, number 46, from 2504 to 2403. Oh, thank goodness. You're not that stupid. Oof. I thought I was getting scared. I was scaring myself there a little bit. I'm not sure, but I was like, this is, this is a better feeling. I can tell you that much, man. Uh, move the 4th Don Cossack Cavalry Division from 2505. This guy. And they're going to join the 14th Reserves. Oh, I haven't done that before. To join the 14th Reserve Siberian Infantry Division, number 56, 2406. Okie dokie. So, let's pop you here to here. Talk about cool, huh? Boink. That was pretty darn easy. I like that stuff. And then I'm going to move uh, BG1 from 2703, which consists of Corps HQ1, the 29th Infantry Division, and nine strength points worth of replacement infantry divisions. And they're going to leave Kovno, hop across the Neiman to 2604. Boink. So that's um, one moving point to get across the river. Um, and two, just because it's clear. And then uh, three, and that's it. Four, because you can't, uh, can't use another whatever across the river. And I certainly don't want to go towards the, well, I couldn't anyways. Well, yeah, you'd be stupid. Well, one, two, and I could, but that would be dumb. I guess I could move the, uh, I could have moved, um, so that, okay, let's see here.